Are you trying to take a space safe flight and you've never taken one before? You've never considered it. You've never gone through the process of it. Now's your time to take one. I'm going to take you on my personal endeavor to take a space safe flight. I'm getting ready to take one soon. And I just want to walk you through the process as I go through it. So let's get into it. So you want to travel space A, you've never done it before. I'm getting ready to go and embark on a space A journey myself across the ocean and then back across the ocean again eventually. And I want to bring you along with me on that process. And the process really starts from signing up for AMC travel on the AMC site. You used to fill out uh, an email, add all the email addresses of all the places you're planning on potentially stopping at along the way, put all your information in there, send that email off to all those different places. And then as they get the emails and process it, they would send you a reply back saying, yes, we've got your email. You've been signed up for space A travel. And basically that starts your clock. If you're active duty, of course, you've only got, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks at a time for leave. So it doesn't really affect you. Plus you're in a cat one status. That means that you are the first on the list to travel if there's space available on the flights. But for those of us who are probably in this community, you're probably in a cat six, uh, maybe a different category, but generally speaking, you're in a cat six. If you're retired already, if you're not retired, um, then you generally can't use space a travel, but if you are retired, uh, you do fall into the cat six category that puts you a little bit further down the list. And so by signing up early as possible, uh, generally speaking, you get to allow yourself up to 60 days to stay on the sign up list from the time you sign up to the time you actually travel. So if you know you're going to travel in, say, September or October and you sign up now, you've given yourself all that time between now and then to be moved up in the priority on the list or the lists, depending on where you're traveling. So for me, myself, I'm traveling probably within the next two to four weeks. So I'm not leaving myself a whole lot of time. It is PCS season right now. So there's a lot of people traveling back and forth, uh, moving all over, the, all over the country for the government. And so it's a little bit of a disadvantage, but uh, I'm going to take my options and see what I can do with it. I do have multiple exit points, which is something that I would definitely recommend if you're trying to fly out of somewhere look to see where you're going to fly out of your primary point, which may be BWI, it may be Dover, it may be somewhere out on the West Coast, out in Sacramento, and try to find if there are any other bases around, and not just Air Force bases. You can also use uh, Navy air stations. You can use some National Guard bases, depending on what the base has and what availability and where they actually fly to. So you want to kind of check into that and have like a second and a third and a fourth option to fly out of. And then on the receiving end where you land, you wanna make sure that you pick at least one or two or three spaces that are kind of close by, depending on where you're flying to, to try to land somewhere nearby, even if you can't fly straight to the destination where you wanna to fly to, or figure out commercial travel once you get on the ground, which you'll probably have to do either way, depending on where you're going. So just keep that in mind, but basically, uh, we go to the, the beloved Air Mobility Command website, and I just want to give them props. Uh, they really have done a lot with this over the years. I remember traveling Space A 20 plus years ago, and it was a way different experience than it is now. When you go to the passenger terminals, when you check in, when you get your baggage checked in, when you get on the flights, the, the meal options, like a lot of that stuff has been highly 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 upgraded especially with the rotator flights and the commercial chartered flights that they have for space a and military personnel uh, flying back and forth especially between conus and oconus they've got these really great chartered flights through places like atlas airlines and a couple other ones and the service is top notch it's really really good but basically what's going to happen is i'm getting ready to fly out so I want to just go down here and you can go to the directory. You can see the categories, of course, like we've discussed in another video. And then if you want to do the old school way, you want to email a sign up form, the form 140, you can download it and then fill out this information and then send the emails off 
to not just one, but all of the passenger terminals. That's what I used to do when I first started doing Space A, when I had to email the stuff, I would just grab all the emails of all the passenger terminals and send it out as one email. That way I had one email in my inbox that I had to look for. And then of course the, the responses that I got back. But what I want to do is I want to go online and fill out the form. Again, you just go to the AMC site, amc.af.mil. You can go to that site and check it out. So yeah, let me actually just read through this real quick. For those who don't like to read, you'll get the audiobook version of it now. This form is provided as a convenience for our customers. The form will allow Space A travelers to sign up for Space A travel by filling out information requested below. Once the submit button is selected, an email will be sent to the departure passenger terminal location chosen on the form. Note, we are currently experiencing technical difficulties with our automated confirmation emails. Before clicking the submit button, we recommend printing your completed form and taking it with you as proof of your date and time of sign up. We apologize for any conveniences this may cause. Now, let me just stop there real quick. Anytime you're doing any kind of travel, whether it's AMC or commercial travel or whatever, you should always have copies of documents that you're for sure going to need, whether that's some kind of travel clearance to get into a country, a visa or something like that, your passports. You want to have all those documents together and ideally in one place. What I would recommend is if you have a folder or something that you can carry in your backpack or in your purse, put all that stuff in one place and keep it there. This form, for example, and the same that I did 20 years ago, I would send out the email and then I would print the email that I sent out and with all the email addresses on there so that I could carry it with me to the terminal to show them in view, in, in lieu of not having a copy of it electronically or them not getting a copy of it or not being able to find it. I always had that form in my pocket every single time I've traveled Space A. So any forms you need, any paperwork you need, if you need birth certificates, if you need any of that stuff, Make sure you have it printed out. Make sure you have a copy of it. Make sure you have all of your valid travel documentation, like passports and ID cards and things of that nature. And don't forget your driver's license, by the way, if you're planning on renting a car when you get to your location, because if you forget your driver's license, you're probably not gonna be able to rent a car. So just keep that in mind. If a confirmation email has not been received, users should consider contacting departure locations to verify a receipt and sign up. This is another step that you want to take. After you send the email, give it a couple days and then just call the terminal and talk to them. And I tell you that every single terminal that I've spoken with over the past 25, 30 years, every single one of them was really, really nice on the phone, very helpful, very courteous, very professional. They are there to help you out and they understand because they deal with people traveling through their locations all the time, right? So they. They want to help you out. And also, if you have any questions, if you have any questions about bringing pets, can I bring my children? How old do they have to be? Do they have to have a passport? Do they have to have an ID card? Depending on whatever their status is and whatever your status is, you can ask those questions to the terminal where you're going to be taking off from to make sure that you get the most accurate and updated information. You can come watch here and get information from me or from Victor or from any of the other sites out there that do space a stuff but you're only going to get the real time information on the ground when you call the terminal i always 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 recommend this hq amc does not perform the space a sign up process this is done at the individual passenger terminals so they're kind of saying that amc itself is the big organization that houses all the the passenger terminals and all the different sites and everything else under that umbrella each individual passenger terminals where you actually check in, where you actually sign, sign the documentation, where you actually pay for the flight, where you actually order your meals. So all of that's done at the individual passenger terminals. And each one is different, right? Depending on if you're flying Air Force or with the Navy plane or whatever it happens to be, you're going to get a slightly different experience at each of those terminals, right? You go to a BWI or a Ramstein, those are huge terminals where thousands of people travel every single day, as opposed to going to a small place like Sigonella, where there's only a handful of people that maybe travel and they only have one or two flights out a week. The bigger terminals probably have five to 10 to 15 flights out a week. 
to going to all different locations all across the world. So just keep that in mind. The information requested on this form is required for Space A travel registration. Your Space A sign up is good for a 60 day period or when your leave expires. As I said, if you're active duty, you're probably not going to hit that 60 day threshold. You're probably going to be two weeks, four weeks at most, right? 30 days is probably about the cap for an active duty member taking leave, whichever comes first for active duty members. Date and time of sign up will establish upon receipt of email at origin departure location using the email header date and time so they are looking at the email header and they're looking at the date and time that's on that email header every single email you send for the history of email has a date and time stamp on there and it tells you when exactly the email was sent that is the date and time that they're going off of due to current technical difficulties your selected passenger terminal may not receive your space a sign up email again print the document and bring it with you in your travel documents folder or in your special Ziploc bag that you keep in your purse, that you keep in your pocket, wherever you keep those documents and that specific information that you need for travel, have that on your person at all times. Treat it like your ID card, literally, if you still have an ID card. Treat it like your passport. Every single one of those documents is super, super important to have and carry it with you the whole time. All right. I'm going to click that to acknowledge print. Do not provide any PII. We know that. Acknowledge not providing any PII. Branch of service. I am former Army. Rank grade is uh, CW3. Tired. And this is all just type in stuff, right? Prefix. Rank Mr. Uh, let's just go with Mr. I, what I don't like is they don't clear out the fields whenever I click in there, so I have to actually go and clear it out first. First name's John, middle initial is A, last name's Connell, suffix none, DOD ID number, so I'll fill that out in a minute. I don't want to put that out on the inf inter information superhighway, but I will put that in there in just a second. Or actually, let me just throw it in there real quick. My handy dandy ID card. Uh, I'll do it at the end. It's fine. Travel requirements. Uh, okay, so let me read this real quick because I did have a couple questions throughout the last couple of years on the videos that I put out already. Active duty members must be on leave or pass status at the time of registration for space available travel and must remain in such status throughout the duration of travel when awaiting and or have been accepted for space A travel means, generally speaking, on midnight of the day that you go on leave. So say you start your leave on the 10th of July, or let's say you start your leave on the 20th of July, right? So at July 19th at 12.01, midnight 01, is when your leave actually starts, right? That is the time when you can then be available to be registered for space A travel. So that means you have to send your email out after midnight, on the 20th or the 19th right the, the evening of the 19th going into the early morning of the 20th after midnight send that email out if you're going to send an email if you're going to do the online form do it after midnight now this means you're going to have to stay up a little bit maybe or if you want to just wait until the next morning and do it on the morning of the 20th that's also fine but you have to be on leave to be able to be accepted for registration for space a and to be able to travel as well right so that's when your time starts that's for active duty members if accompanied by dependents service members travel must not be in conjunction with tdy ttad not a duty passenger traveling on orders because if you're traveling on orders that's a whole different scenario and in some cases your family members who are traveling with you also have to be on tdy orders or ttad orders and they have to have a special passport to travel with you on those orders. So just keep that in mind. Dependents 14 years of age or older must possess a valid DOD ID card. For children under the age of 14, please bring documented proof of guardianship from DEERS. Here's a click where you can click the website. Uh, let's see if I can open it in a new, new tab. And it goes to Mill Connect, of course. So what you would do is sign in and get the information. If you go on the main Space A, 
travel page, there's a link there and I can drop it down in the description below where you can go and do the validation for your children who are under the age of 14. And you will also want to print that documentation out and bring it with you as well to the space, a terminal where you're going to be flying out of again, all those documentation pieces, you want to keep them with you in one place on your person at all times. Your acceptance of transportation on board DOD owned or controlled aircraft must not be for personal gain. That means you can't be traveling for business or something like that for some kind of business experience, nor for or in connection with personal business of any nature, and that this trip will not result in any form of remuneration, payments, gifts, or any type of compensation to you or your family members. That is self-explanatory. I'm not going to touch that. You understand what that means. That means be trustworthy in your actions and, and do the things that you're doing without doing them for some ulterior motives and reasons. Any violation of the above conditions could result in traveler being billed for travel and or punitive action. Okay. All right. On to the rest of the form. Space A cat six. Number of seats required is one. Dependent name, passport type, US foreign. Uh, no. I don't have any dependents. Never mind. This is where you would put your family members, your wife, your kids, your husband, uh, whoever your dependents are who are going to be traveling with you. You need to put their names and their passport types. If Assuming you're flying outside of the continental United States. If you're not flying outside the continental United States, it doesn't matter. Then I would probably just put the DOD ID number in there. And again, you'll have to make sure that you get all that documentation for those who are under 14. Leave dates. I'm going to begin my leave on the 19th, but technically this is just for active duty and I'm not active duty. So we don't really need to put anything there, but that will basically establish the day that my 60 day window starts and also the date on the email. Active duty personnel must be in a leave status to sign up for Space A. We already established that. If your leave extended, you must notify a passenger service agent before this date. Got it? So if you need to get your leave extended, if you need to call back to the unit and say, hey, um, I was trying to get out, but I had some difficulties. The, the flight that I was going to take got canceled or delayed. And now I'm going to be stuck here for another week. Can you just do an extension onto my leave? Generally speaking, they'll give you the, the north south and say, okay, it's fine. And then they'll also probably give you an amended leave form at some point electronically and send it to you. I don't really know how all that works anymore because I'm not active dude anymore. But if you're in that situation and that applies, there you go. Departure location. All right. Let's see. I'm going to put that. Can I pick more than one? I cannot. So I'm going to pick that. All right. Coolsies. Destination countries of choice. Germany, Japan, USA, USA. Um, that's all I need to put. You can put up to five. And I'm just going to the States. So that's all I'm putting there. Border clearance requirements. It's as if you're flying to a place that's, say you're flying from the United States to Rota, Spain, for example. There are a bunch of other countries and a bunch of other places that you have to have this kind of travel travel guidance uh, documentation to allow you into the country. Um, if you're going to the States, of course, and you're a U.S. citizen, then you don't need that. For overseas travel, are your passports, border clearance documents current? I will just click yes. And I will not worry about that because, again, I'm traveling stateside, not OCONUS. So as you see here, CONUS, no documents required. I guess I could just click that as well. Email sign up will be john.a.mccoll at gmail and if you need to get a hold of me that's the same email address feel free to use that just don't send me any spam because i will block you all right text notifications all right let's read this real quick sms text notifications email and sms text notifications are now available to amc passengers space a passengers can opt into this new feature during the space a sign up process which is what we're going through right now Passengers are encouraged to provide their personal cell phone number and or personal email address. Currently, only CONUS cell phone numbers plus one area codes are accepted. For travelers with non-US cell phone number, you may still provide your personal email address. If you do not wish to travel to receive travel updates, enter declined in the fields below, declined. 
official DOD email addresses will not be accepted as most members and their dependents will not have access to their official mail while traveling. If you provide an email or a cell phone number in the following fields, it will be entered into Gates, the AMC passenger manifesting system. This input will be used to send you email and or SMS text notifications during your travel to provide you information, confirmations of space available travel and space required travel sign up. So I'm for sure doing this. Um, so that's my Gmail. Here's my phone number for those of you who don't already have it. Use it wisely. Verify information before sending. Is this information correct? Yes, it is. Oh, I have to go back and do my thing, right? I have to put my DOD ID number in there. So let me just pop this off the screen real quick. You can see my ugly mug for a minute while I put that in there. Pull up my handy dandy retiree card and flash it in front of the screen really fast so it doesn't, that you can't stop and get the number off of it. All right. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And that is it, my friends. That is it. We are going to send this off and see what happens. And now we wait. Thank you for your submission. The AMC passenger terminal, you requested sign up from may reply with a confirmation email. You should receive a copy of the sign up email from the AMC travel website. Ensure that you bring a copy of your sign up email confirmation to the terminal as proof to verify that you indeed did the things. That's it. Check your junk folder or spam just in case as the email might get diverted to one of those kind of folders, depending on your email provider. That's it. This has actually been a really long one. Um, I'm just going to cut it off here. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Reach out to me. You now have my email address and my phone number. So if you would need to feel like you need to send me a text message, send me a text message. It's fine. But be sure to comment and let me know what you think. If you're traveling soon, where you're going, if you want to dis disclose that. And let me know experience and let me know what else you need to know about space travel as I start to push out some more of these videos. All right. Have a good one. See you later.